What's going on everybody? In this video, we are going to talk about the 13 new sales call widgets, which we can now implement into our dashboards so we can track our sales a lot better. Let's get into it. So first things first, you want to go to your sub account and then you want to go to dashboard on the left and you want to click the drop down menu where you can now create a new dashboard for your call tracking activities call tracking okay you can have multiple dashboards as well for multiple purposes we're going to get into each of them now so you can select if you only want to see this as for example the sales manager or if you want to share this with everyone so you can maybe create a little bit of competition in your sales team and every morning have you know a stand-up meeting or every week have a wrap up and say hey this person did this many calls and that person did that many calls and give like bonuses and extras for the people who closed more deals on each of those calls right so for now, just going to be me to see this. And this is all the users within your account, right? You can add the users to your account. And this would be then everyone who has access to that account. Hit confirm. And then we have the blank dashboard, okay? On the top right, you can click that little pencil icon and you can add your widgets. On the top, you can see the different styles visually, how you would like them to appear visually. So we have numeric, we have donut, we have the line, we have the bar and we have the horizontal bar. We're going to implement all of those so you can see how they all look like. Then we're going to cruise down to calls here and you can see the 13 new different call widgets we have here. So why would you want to use each of them? So let's talk about it. The incoming calls status, the number of incoming calls grouped by status. Why would you want to use that? Well, maybe you want to evaluate your handling efficiency, right? You can monitor how incoming calls are distributed amongst different statuses. For example, you answered them, you missed them, they will be put on hold, things like that. Or you want to identify the bottlenecks in addressing calls and make adjustments to improve response response time. How quickly do your people pick up the phone? How often do they miss to pick up the phone? Are they too busy? Why do they not pick up the phone? Are they still talking to somebody else? Do you need to hire somebody additionally to pick up more phone calls? Things like that. Then we have the outgoing calls by status. The number of outgoing calls grouped by status as well. Why would you want to track this? Simply to analyze outbound calling performances. Track outgoing calls by status again, right? Connected, picked up, didn't pick up. I reached the voicemail. I left the voice message. I'm too busy. They're too busy, right? To assess the effectiveness of your sales or customer support team. Like maybe we can call in a different time zone. Did we even check the time zone? Where do, are these people from? Are they working? Are they on their way home? Are they driving? Things like that, right? So you can really figure out when is the best time to call and how efficient is my team in implementing new strategies and figuring out when is the best time to call. And what's not being tracked cannot be improved, right? So over a time span of a specific time period, you want to pay attention to patterns which pop up over and over again. So that makes it a pattern. It's not just, oh, this one call or this, you know, maybe 10 calls didn't go as planned. You have to see the bigger picture. And yeah, this can only be achieved through properly tracking with these widgets, okay? So let's move on to widget number three, incoming calls, total call duration. The total duration of all the incoming calls. Why would you want to track that? Maybe you want to assess the call volume impact. Maybe you want to measure the total duration of all incoming calls to understand the load on your support or sales team as well. Similar to just what I just said, right? Do you need to hire more people? Do they need to be trained better in order to keep the call shorter to get the customer or the prospect to the end of the call faster and more efficient? Do you need to work on your sales scripts maybe? Or maybe you want to identify the peak call periods. When are most people available? And you can allocate your resources according to that data, which you're going to collect with the new call widget. Now let's move on to the outgoing calls, total call duration, the total duration of all outgoing calls, as the name suggests. Why would you want to track that? Well, to evaluate your sales efforts. Again, what you don't track cannot be improved. So the system will calculate the total duration of all outgoing calls made by your sales team, okay? Determine how much time is spent on outgoing sales calls, helping in resource and allocation and time management, all right? So the next widget would be incoming calls, average call duration. This use case could be to improve customer engagement. So here the system will analyze the average duration of incoming calls to gauge customer engagement levels and also to identify opportunities to enhance the customer interactions and provide more personalized support. And also how quickly can your people sell on people who are 
calling you incoming calls right people who call you back are really hot leads they're really interested in what you have to say they want to speak with you so how quickly can your sales team get them through the finish line next outgoing calls average call duration why would you want to use that again to enhance sales techniques this time we want to enhance our sales techniques, maybe improve our scripts. How long does it take on average for our outgoing calls in order to get to the end result? So through the average duration of outgoing calls, you can assess the sales pitch and evaluate the effectiveness of the actual script. How are your people's pitching? How effective is it what they're saying? You can identify areas where sales reps might need additional training or guidance. Next up is the total calls placed by call attendee. And by call attendee, we mean your users, your sales reps, right? So this way you can really monitor individual performance. How well is every single sales rep doing? You can track the total number of outgoing calls made by each team member and you can evaluate individual performance and identify the top performing sales or support agents. You can run competitions on this. Again, you can put out the reports every day or every week in order for them to be really motivated to become better and better and better every day. Next up, the incoming calls, average call duration by call attendee. Why would you want to measure this? Well, easy peasy to really identify the individual agent efficiency. Next up is the incoming calls, average call duration by call attendee. What does that mean? <laughs> that means you can track the individual agent efficiency. So you can compare the average call duration among team members who attend incoming calls and therefore recognize and reward agents who can handle calls much more efficiently. I'm telling you, sales people are very motivated people. So if you start to make competitions and things like that, they will go for it. And these tools are worth gold to do these kind of things. Next up, outgoing calls, average call duration by call attendee. Why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you want to optimize your sales approach, okay? Again, what you don't measure cannot be improved, right? You can analyze the average call duration for outgoing calls made by each salesperson. How quickly are they able to warm up the people to make a connection with the people who are they trying to sell to, right? You can identify which sales reps may benefit from refining their sales strategies or maybe even need to get rid of them and replace them, unfortunately. Unfortunately, right. Next up is the first time call by status. Why would you want to track that? Well, you can assess the first contact success. You can determine how first time incoming calls are distributed amongst different statuses and therefore evaluate how effectively the first contact of customer is being managed. What is the experience first time somebody reaches out to you? Very important, right? The first impression counts. Next, the first time call average duration. Why would you want to track that? Well, to improve initial interactions as well, right? So again, like it's not about looking at the numbers of one or two or three calls. It's the bigger picture. It's a bigger pattern. So you can analyze the average duration of first-time incoming calls to assess the quality of initial customer interaction and then implement strategies to enhance the customer experience during the first contact. How can you be better the first time someone gets in touch with you? How can you make it even better and better and better? Next up is the first time call average duration by call attendees. That's again to track your people, right? So the agent training and performance will be tracked here. You can compare the average duration of first time incoming calls handled by different salespeople or agents and identify training needs and opportunities to improve the effectiveness of the first interaction again. Very important. How do these sales agents treat your prospects? And last but not least, the first time call total duration. Why would you want to track that? Well, again, to assess initial contact impact. You can calculate the total duration of first-time incoming calls to understand the overall time investment in initial customer interaction. Does this make sense to hire so many people to make this many phone calls? Where is the ROI? Where's the return on investment? Are you spending more money in the front end, but you're maybe getting it back in the back end, things like that. These numbers need to be tracked in order to make educated decisions in your business if these marketing activities even make sense for your audience, right? So you can use this data to refine onboarding processes as well and customer engagement strategies. Another reason why you would want to track these numbers is if you run a coaching business or an agency where you have sales reps taking your calls, you want to make sure that they're busy and fully booked all the time. You don't want to have two sales reps each operating on 50%. Then you're just paying double, right? Like better have one salesperson operating at 100% and really max out their time. And therefore you need those widgets in place in order to track these things. 
Now let's start building just a few to show you the visual representation of that as well. Let's say we take the first time called total duration. You can select how you would want this visually to show up. Donut, line, bar, or horizontal bar. Let's take the donut and you can configure this, right? There's different conditions you can also set, but let's stick with the configuration first. So the first time called duration, you can rename it if you would like. The metrics. Do you want the sum? Do you want a minimum? Do you want a maximum duration? And so on. You can select between average and account. The direction, call status, assigned to team member. Do you want to look at a specific team member? Call attended by this person, source type, where did they come from? What kind of funnel did they book through? And so on, right? Then you can also select the order descending or ascending, and you can put the limit. You want to see 10, 11, 12, 20, whatever. So then you can also select the date property. So this is important if you want to do a recap every day, every morning, every week, every month, who was the best sales rep and so on. You can just go here and you can put maybe, let's take, you can do days, you can do weeks, months, quarters, or years, let's say last year, right? And then hit save. And then all of this will pop up here. So there's zero. There's a demo account, obviously, but first time call duration zero. Okay. So this is how the donut representation would look like. And then if you want to modify it again, you click on the three dots here and then hit edit or delete if you want to get rid of it and you come back to the same window as I just showed you. Let's add another widget to, for you to see. Let's take the line to see the different representations. Let's see outgoing calls. Let's say date range last year, hit save. That's how that would look like. Okay, they've been declined. Outgoing calls have declined. Why? Why did they decline? Where are all the sales reps, right? Like go back and refine your strategies. Why did they decline? Add another widget. Let's go to the bar, for example. Go to calls and let's say total calls placed by call attendee. Let's say again, we want to take last year, hit save. And here we go. Okay. So these total calls placed by call out today. Okay, so add another widget. So that was the bar. And let's take the horizontal bar in this case, in the next case. And let's select again that, and that would be the horizontal bar. I liked it. I love it. I love the, the visual representation. You can also move them around if you want to have more important graphs up here. And that's how you would just add all of your types. You can have a numeric one. Let's do that. That would be the little one popping up right here, okay? So you don't have to add all of these 13 different widgets. Just add those which really make sense to you and your strategies and how big your team is and so on and so forth. I hope you like this video and I will see you in the next one.